Hey guys, well, I'm out in the shop today and I'm working on the G0602. I've been running parts for a couple of weeks now on the, this machine and these are parts that I run several times a year. So the G code is already established, but I'm always trying to find ways to update and refine it. So I'm always tweaking the G code. Now some of these parts are through spindle parts where I simply machine the part and then I'll release the stock and then slide it up to a predetermined length and then clamp it back down and restart the g-code that way I don't have to reset zero every time now this is really quick and efficient and works really well however for this particular machine and most small lays, the through bore is not that big. Maybe an in, on this machine it's an inch. Some of the 12 inch lays it's about an inch and a half. So we don't have the luxury to uh, clamp up stock through the spindle unless it's smaller than an inch and a half. Well that works for most stuff, but there are some parts that I run that are in some 3 inch tube and the pieces are four inches long so what I do is clamp that stock up in in the chuck and it's sticking out four inches I get it all centered and I'll machine my part and then part it off but then I still have three and a half inches of stock left in the past what I've done to solve this is I use fixture offsets and I did a video on this a while back and showed you how to set up Mach 3 fixtures and offsets. And I'll post a link in the video description for you to refer back to that video. Well, I was running these same parts again this week. However, the problem I run into is I don't use this machine solely for this particular part. Therefore, my fixtures change between the time I run the part and the next time I run the part so I have to go back and reset zero on each individual work offset now Mach 3 has 254 work offsets so I guess I could use different work offsets down here for different parts you still need to make sure that all of your zeros are set correctly otherwise you're going to mess up your material so I thought to myself there's got to be an easier way to do this maybe I can figure out a way to just do this in G54 and not worry about these other offsets what I've done in the past I use a piece of stock that's four inches long and I can get seven pieces out of each piece of stock so what I've done is I just copied and pasted the G code seven different times using a different work offset after each piece and then th that way it will move my zero from here down to here and then continue on until I have used up the remaining stock uh, the first one is G54 so once I part it off then it goes down and starts the next part on G55 and then again G56 7 8 and so on it works just fine it just makes for long G code and so if you have to do any type of editing then you have to re-edit the whole entire file so what I came up with is a subroutine and let me see if I can show you this so the main program consists of an M98. A M98 is just a subroutine. P0002 is just the program number, the subroutine number. L is the amount of times we're going to run this routine and in my case it's seven times. So we just simply note up here this is our main program it's M98 we're going to be calling the subroutine number two and we're going to do this seven times 
pretty simple. I just had to add a couple of lines of code here to my established G code. Then down here, I've notated that this is our sub routine, our sub program. You have to use a letter O followed by the subroutine number. In this case, it's 0002. So a P word follows up with an O word. And then now is just the program. We're in G54. We're going to run our program. There's uh, three different operations, an internal, an external, and a parting operation. Then when we get down to the bottom, I've had it move my tool back to the zero position because this tool number uh, is our parting tool. So it's I'm repositioning this so that it is exactly at zero. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to call a macro. Now this macro is going to just go up and basically manually reset my z-axis DRO. Once it does that, it's going to return. Now an M98 cycle has to end with an M99. That is a, a return. So it's going to return back up here and it's going to run it six more times. Going to go back through the code, run the part, it's going to again reset zero, return, and run it five more times until it gets to seven occurrences. And then that will be the end of the part. A lot of us run into this where we have to manually go and reset zero each time so what would happen is I would run this part then I would line my tool back up to the edge here then I would go back come up here press zero then go back in the cycle and then I could restart the cycle again and run the next part so all I'm doing with this subroutine and this macro is just automatically doing that so all I have to do is just change out the tool and hit cycle start and continue on. So to make all this work you need a couple of things. You need this M98, M30, you need to label your sub program. This is an O followed by the program number and then at the end of the program it needs to have an M99 to return back up to this CAN cycle. The other thing that we need to make this work is our macro down here. So how do we go about making a macro so that we can manually reset our z-axis DRO? Now you notice that when it's generating this it does it seven times even though it only shows it once and of course the file is only running once but it, if you notice it'll do it it'll generate it seven times because that is how many times we're going to rerun this code so we want to go up to operator VB script editor and we want to type in sub space main enter then we want to type in call capital C A L L space capital S E T D R O space open parentheses 2 because the Z axis D R O is number 2 comma zero that's what we want to set it to and we want to close the parentheses 
So we're going to set our z-axis DRO to zero. Hit space. And then I like to put a message down here just to let me know. So we're going to type in capital M E S S A G E message space quotes space G fifty four Z axis reset to zero. In quotes, press enter, and then I want to sleep, open parentheses, 500, that's a half a second, and close parentheses. Press enter, and then we want to type in capital E-N-D space capital S-U-B in sub, and so now we have written our subroutine. We want to save this, so go to File, Save As. You want to save this in your local drive, Mach 3, Macros, Mach 3 Turn. If you've created a profile like I have, then um, you can save it in here. Just make sure that whatever number you choose is not already used. I'm using 1000, so we'll hit save. Now let's test out this script, make sure it's working. Uh, I'm not in a reset condition, I don't know if it's going to work, but watch here, and when this runs, it will reset our DRO here. Okay, it didn't work because let me power up here. Okay, so let's run our script. You can see our Z axis was reset to zero. And we also put a message down here that G54 Z axis reset to zero. So there you go. Anytime M1000, let me turn this on. Anytime you run G code and you hit M1000, it's going to reset your Z-axis DRO. Uh, I run several different parts where I'm having to reposition and reset my Z-axis zero because the stock is just too big in diameter to go through my spindle, so I have to reposition it. Uh, whenever I need to do that now I can just call M1000 and it will automatically reset my zero and I can put it in I can put my G code into a subroutine like so and it makes everything simpler and easier alright guys well hopefully this will help you when you're running parts that are big diameter parts and they won't fit within the spindle and you're having to reposition your z-axis zero in order to make parts. The parts that I uh, run are from some big tubing and I'm only using about a half inch of the stock with each part so I'm progressively getting closer to the spindle. It's been working well with using just the fixture offsets However, I have to set up each fixture for each part. Doing it this way, I can just set it all up on G54 and it will recalculate zero every time. Once I load in a new piece of stock, I can reset my zero at the end and then continue to run parts. Save me a lot of time and a lot of hassle. Guys, thanks for watching the videos. Uh, special thanks to Eric, uh, he is a runs a uh, CNC machine shop, and he runs all different types of machines, mainly Haas. I contacted him last night for some ideas on maybe some subroutines and subprograms, 
and he does a lot of these type of macros for palette changers and that type of stuff. While I was talking with him, it kind of occurred to me what, how I could resolve this issue I was having. So I appreciate his input, kind of put my mind in the right uh, mindset to be able to simplify this and get it done. So thanks Eric for that. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thumbs up if you liked the video. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, this should be a great tip for ever making continuous parts out of a long piece of stock. I think it'll be very beneficial. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you have any suggestions or questions, please feel free to comment. And most importantly, peace out.